Mark Siomo, Chairman of Ways and Means and the awesome Brighton District City Councilor. Today is Tuesday, September 18th. Uh, we are here to review docket 1333, message in order for your approval, a declaration of trust entitled My Way Cafe Trust Fund. This trust will further promote the public health, safety, convenience, and welfare by pr promoting the health of students in Boston schools. This trust establishes a fund in the city to renovate or retrofit kitchens and to facilitate serving fresh, healthy meals cooked on site in various Boston public schools. I'd like to remind folks this is a public hearing uh, recorded and uh, broadcast live on Comcast Channel 8, RCN 82, Verizon 1964, and streamed at boston.gov backslash city dash council dash TV. I'd like to ask folks in the chamber to silence their electronic devices. The conclusion of the presentation and questions and answers from my colleagues, we will have public testimony. There are sign-in sheets by the door to my left. We ask that you sign in, state name, uh, residence, and affiliation, and please mark the box if you wish to testify. Uh, like to also uh, introduce my colleagues in order of their arrival uh, from South Boston, District City Councilor Ed Flynn, and from East Boston, District City Councilor Lydia Edwards. Uh, I'd like to welcome both John and Justin uh, from the City Administration, and uh, you have a presentation to uh, present. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for allowing us to be here today. I'm going to walk you through just a brief presentation of what we call My Way Cafe, which we presented to you about back in the springtime as part of the Food Nutrition Services budget hearing. At that time, the model was known as Hub and Spoke. Uh, this is an update on the My Way Cafe rollout uh, with some exciting news regarding our latest wave of expansion over the course of the summer. Uh, after I conclude with a brief presentation, uh, Justice, Justin from the Office of Budget Management will walk through some of the mechanics of a trust that we seek to create within the city on how to administer funds for this project in years going forward. Thanks. As mentioned, we launched the hub and spoke model now called My Way Cafe last spring in East Boston through generous support from the Shaw Family Foundation. Uh, specifically, we rolled out the model in four different schools in East Boston, East Boston High School, the East Boston Early Education Center, the Patrick J. Kennedy School, and the Bradley School. We were very, very happy to see the success of the model, specifically in allowing us to achieve the goals listed in that slide. Uh, allows us to serve fresher food to students, to achieve menu equity, to improve the dining experience, and to reduce packaging waste. And the plan, as we all know now, is to expand the model across the district. I want to highlight that picture there. It seems somewhat trivial on the course of this slide, um, but it's actually significant to the um, to the, uh, the value of this new model for school food in that it actually provides a menu every day for students, whereas in the past they did not receive a menu, they just received a prepackaged food item. Um, they now can go through a line uh, like students in the larger cafeteria schools and choose what they want. Um, it's hard to overstate the importance of that and what it means to our students. One uh, brief note on that, when I was walking through one of the <coughs> early pilots last year, we overheard one of the students say that this was like eating at the food court at the mall. So it's very exciting for the kids. <laughs> the initial rollout provided some operational highlights and key learnings. Uh, we were very happy to see that participation increased on average from 7 to 15 percent at the four different sites that used this model last spring. We saw less plate waste, and really what that means is when a student is just getting a prepackaged item, there might be five items on that tray, and they might only like two of them. Maybe they only like three of them, and a lot of it gets thrown away. Um, what happens now is because they get to choose what's on their plate and what they eat, then less gets wasted. Additionally, we found that training is key for staff. This is a very big departure from the way that staff uh, used to operate within our school sites, um, and so we have extensive training now that are offered for that staff operating the My Way Cafe model. We're also happy to see, and I'm sure Justin is happy to see, that there are some cost efficiencies with this model. The food cost is 
far less in our MyWay Cafe sites than it is in our prepackaged satellite sites. Uh, we call them satellites because uh, we still have approximately 80 different sites across the district that serve the prepackaged food in satellite kitchens. We're trying to replace that with MyWay Cafe. The food costs are far less with the MyWay Cafe model. The labor costs are higher because you need more staff to administer the model correctly, uh, but it ends up being a net positive in terms of financials uh, for the city. And lastly, as you can see from the smiling faces there, children are eager to make it my way. Um, and that's again why we call it My Way Cafe, because they get to choose what they want on their plates. By the spring, we're happy to say that the My Way Cafe model will be operating in 31 schools across East Boston, Roxbury, and Mattapan. The blue box in the top left lays out those four schools I mentioned previously. We have since expanded over the course of the summer to an additional 27 schools that allows us to complete East Boston. And by complete, I now mean that all of our schools in East Boston will be outfitted with the My Way Cafe model. We also have expanded into Mattapan and Roxbury. As you can see in the parentheses in those boxes next to East Boston, Mattapan, and Roxbury, we're phasing the transition to the My Way Cafe model at different times of the year so as to maximize the amount of attention we can spend on each school that rolls it out. So uh, East Boston expansion is happening as we speak. The Otis Elementary just began its first days of operating under the My Way Cafe model this past Monday. Uh, we'll complete the East Boston schools through September and October and then Mattapan will start operating under that model in November, and the Roxbury schools will start in January. What that means is the schools up until that transition point will continue to operate with the prepackaged food that we get from our food vendor before fully transitioning over to the My Way Cafe. I'm very, very happy to say that the schools in bold all required some level of construction in order to convert their sites to true My Way Cafe sites, and uh, it's, it's, again, hard to overstate the amount of work that has to take place for that to happen. You're oftentimes taking a small room that's almost nothing more than a closet with a cooler and a cash register and turning it into a kitchen uh, where you actually have a food service line that students can walk through to actually choose their food items. Uh, multiple staff greeting students. It's a big, big change. I want to take the time now to thank our partners in the Public Facilities Department for orchestrating that process, for folks from City Hall uh, leadership from the Chief of Staff, Dave Sweeney, to Justin Sterrett, to Emma Handy, the CFO, to Pat Barofi, the COO, uh, and several others. I also want to thank Bob Smith from the BPS facilities team, who is completely integral in making this happen, uh, as well as the generous support of the Shaw Family Foundation for being at the table with us every Thursday in weekly meetings since February. It's, it's, again, hard to overstate how difficult it is to do the construction at 15 schools over the span of a little more than a month, but that's ultimately what happened through the course of August to get our last round of schools ready for the school year. A brief note on why we've started with these three neighborhoods. As you can see here from the metrics on this slide, we're focusing on the percentage of economically disadvantaged students in our schools the opportunity index, which I'll come back to in a second, and the percentage of lunch participation. It's also helpful to note the amount of students that would be served under this model. As you can see from focusing on East Boston, Mattapan, and Roxbury, we are focusing on those students with higher needs uh, before rolling out to the rest of the school district, although it is our intent to roll it out to the rest of the school district, although final decisions have not yet been made on the timing of that rollout or the specific neighborhoods that will come next. A note on the Opportunity Index, um, I believe City Council has had separate hearings related to this. That's a new metric created uh, by a cross-sector of folks from inside and outside of BPS. It's meant to um, provide a rough gauge on the size of the opportunity gap affecting the students in our schools. The larger that number, the greater the opportunity gap. And so uh, neighborhoods with higher Opportunity Index scores, scores typically would have higher needs. I wanted to close out this presentation with a few sample photographs of before, during, and after construction at one of our <coughs> schools. This is the Adams Elementary School in East Boston. The uh, pictures there on the first slide for before construction show a very, very, basic, very basic bare bones uh, kitchen setup in that school. Again, we really only had a couple coolers and a cash register. Those coolers would be stocked with the prepackaged items. The students would come through, they'd get a prepackaged meal, they'd get a milk, and then go back to the dining area. 
If you can see in the during construction photo, one of the bigger changes that had to happen is we had to remove that staircase in order to create space uh, to open that up a little bit more and create the service lines that we need in a My Way Cafe school. We also had to do some extensive plumbing work uh, along that space, as you can see along the back wall. And then lastly, in the after shot there, in the last slide before, <coughs> excuse me, before we wrap up the presentation, you have, it's still a small space, but it's a, a gleaming new kitchen area, uh, complete with the service line that's, as of next Monday, going to transform the food experience for the students at that school. I will pause there for any questions on the presentation that I've offered you before Justin uh, lays out some of the ideas behind the trust itself. Great. Thank, thank you, John. Um, what is the overall participation rate vis-a-vis um, -vis the first model of hub and spoke versus the other prepackaged sites? What I can tell you, Councillor, is for the four schools that uh, launched the My Way Cafe pilot in the springtime, their participation rates increased by about 7 to 15 percent. So many of them were already in the 60 to 80 percent range, but they went up to the 70 to 90 percent range in mm -hmm. some cases. Um, the rest of the school districts, as you can see from some of the data that we had here um, mm -hmm. on whatever that is, slide five. Yeah. Uh, the lunch participation rate across the rest of the district outside of the three neighborhoods we focused on is 64%. We're hopeful that uh, with the eventual launch of My Way Cafe in those neighborhoods, which will take a few years, we may end up getting higher than 70 or 75% lunch participation from those schools. Great, and how do we measure waste? Because uh, you know we've had numerous hearings you know, every year. Um, and waste seemed to be a big problem, um, obviously with the prepackaged. Uh, are we still seeing a large amount of waste or? Well, certainly with the My Way Cafe model, we're seeing less waste because as I mentioned before, students are only putting on their plates what they want and mm -hmm. they're not putting on their plates what they don't. Right. I was at the Oda School just yesterday for the second day of their launch and you saw some students with, with plates full of all sorts of different things mm -hmm. from the service line and others with just a few items. Um, one student said that this is like eating at a five-star hotel. Um, just wanted to share that because wow. it came up. It doesn't necessarily answer your question, <laughs> but I praise, thought it was a funny quote. Praise. Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it does look good. It is good food and it's fresh food and students find the food very appealing um, mm -hmm. and it's, it's culturally sensitive as well to the students we serve. Um, as for the waste, I, I have Laura Benavides here who's our Executive Director of Food Nutrition Services. She and her team lead plate waste studies Good. Yeah. each year, every other year. If you'd like, either after the presentation here, mm -hmm. she'd be happy to discuss that with you, or we could call her down and answer more questions yeah. if you'd like. No, we can, you know, I just, I'm, I'm happy to hear that we're measuring mm -hmm. not only the success, but maybe what's not successful right. in the program. Um, and finally, where do we get the groceries and the, the meats and the poultry or whatever we use for for the cooking? We already have a, a grocery vendor that we've used for years, uh, not necessarily the same vendor, but we've, we've had the need for a grocer for years and years because of our cafeteria schools already. Mm -hmm. And the cafeteria schools are already similar to the My Way Cafe schools in that they have the service lines. Think of the cafeterias that we have in high schools. Mm -hmm. um, in those sites, typically we're not just pack, uh, handing out prepackaged meal. Right. So we have grocers that provide all of those raw ingredients to mm -hmm. our schools. Mm -hmm. We've simply had to expand what we end up procuring from the grocer to mm -hmm. allow us to, to use the My Way Cafe model appropriately. Right, and w is that put up for um, bidding? It yes. Okay. Who applies for that kind of contract? Do you get a, uh, a vendor like a Stop and Shop or a Whole Foods or any of those uh, you know, retailers applying for these kinds of bids? I don't believe any of the retailers bid on it, and Laura Thurston's is the current grocer, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's an organization or a company known as Thurston's that provides like, you know, the raw food groceries to, to school districts. Great. Uh, and one, one other question on that. You said um, for obvious reasons, labor costs go up, but, um, you know, not throwing away as much, better food, better product, most importantly for the kids' nutrition, obviously. But when you say it's kind of a wash, um, obviously we have to hire more folks 
to do the cooking and serving and cleaning and all that. Um, are we looking at a different kind of budget for the, the food service part of the school budget? It, certainly the budget looks differently in a My Way Cafe school than it would in a, in a satellite school mm -hmm. that's using the prepackaged food. Um, it ends up being a net positive though financially for the My Way Cafe sites. Uh, again, your, your labor costs in a My Way Cafe site are more than your labor costs in a typical satellite site. Mm -hmm. But the differential there is less than the differential that we save in the fact that food costs are now cheaper in a right. MyWay Cafe yeah. um, site because you're bringing in the raw ingredients and then making it from scratch rather than buying the prepackaged items. Right. There's also <clears throat> the, the couple cents every single meal that you save and not having the packaging that we typically would deal with in a satellite site. Gotcha. Okay. Councillor Flynn. Thank you, Councillor CMO, and I'd like to uh, thank our two, um, two guests for providing a lot of good information that's helpful to our students. Um, I had a couple questions or, or points. Um, on, the, on, on the chart, prioritizing the most needy neighborhoods, um, can I, after this hearing is over, could I get a copy of the other neighborhoods that are not listed um, on this chart, just my own reference at, at some time? Mm -hmm. And you know, I just want to thank you for the work you're doing. I think this is such a, an important program. It's critical, giving our young children the opportunity to have a nutritional meal, the start of the school day. I had the opportunity to be out on City Hall Plaza the other day and talking to some people from the Greater Boston Food Bank. And that's exactly what they were talking about, is if a, if a child gets a good meal for breakfast and for lunch, that child is more likely to be a, a, a better student. So I just want to say thank you to the um, BPS for um, you know, thinking through this issue. I think, it's, I think it's very important. Could, when you continue this program, could you also factor in, I know, I know you did mention culturally sensitive um, communities. I represent a high concentration of Chinese. Um, I also represent a high concentration, concentration of Latino and Somalian. Can we also factor those um, issues in as well as, as we move forward? Uh, yeah, I'm sure we can and I believe that we have as well um, in schools in the past. And my other point would be um, I also represent many schools that are located right in public housing. Um, the Perkins, the, the Condon, and the Blackstone is, is towards Villa Victoria in the cathedral. Mm -hmm. But do you have any, any type of outreach for students that are from public housing development? Um, any way to make it easier for them to have access to nutritional programs or is any other special special program factoring in their, their living situation? Outside of the school environment, I don't believe so, um, not to my knowledge, but we can, we can certainly discuss that offline afterwards and try to get you the information that you might be looking for. Okay, and maybe, maybe down the road, if there's an opportunity, as, as we factor in the budget, um, you know, what, what nutritional programs might be available for students on the weekends, especially if they're, you know, if the school is open or the community center is open on the weekend, could we give our students the opportunity to come, in, to come into a community center so that they're able to have, have a nutritional breakfast or, or, or some lunch or the family's able to come in and, and get some nutritional food? I think that would be long-term I think that would be important. I just want to see if that's something down the road if we could have a conversation about. Yeah, we can certainly look into that. One thing I, I can say too is that uh, in the last, I believe, two summers, City Hall as well as the Bowling Building and other sites have participated in a summer meals program mm -hmm. over the course of the summer for students who you know, otherwise would have been in school, but now during the summer break, they still need the food nutrition that we provide on a regular basis. So we do have that program that we've done in, in collaboration with the mayor's office, New York Mechanics. Yeah, that was the group that was out 
out front of City Hall mm -hmm. during the summertime. Do they have that program throughout various neighborhoods of Boston, or is it just kind of concentrated here in the downtown area? I don't know where else it's located. We had it at the bowling building this year as well in Dudley Square. Um, I don't know where else it is right now, though. I'm sorry. Again, we can get back to you with that. Maybe, maybe during budget season, if we can have a pilot program that we could have several neighborhoods um, participate in it where we could have, um, you know, lunch programs in the summertime for, for students, whether it's in the summertime or, or in the weekends, um, I, think that would, I think that would go over well for the students and their families. And if there's anything that I could be helpful with, um, please let me know as well. Again, just want to say thank you to um, public schools for what you're doing, um, trying to give kids the best opportunity to have nutritional, a nu nutritional meal. And it's the best way for a student to learn is, is starting off the day right with, with a good breakfast. So just want to say thank you to um, your staff. Thank you. Councilor Edwards. Thank you. Um, again, I, I echo my colleagues' comments about the work. I especially am appreciative of the emphasis on schools that are the most needy and probably the most diverse as well in our, in our system. I think it was wonderful to have them be prioritized for such an innovative uh, uh, meal plan, and I think it really demonstrates a real um, dedication to all of our students. I, I had the opportunity to actually have one of the meals. Uh, I can testify that they were very delicious. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm incredibly happy to see that this kicked off in East Boston, that it's expanding and will continue throughout all of, all of the system. Um, in terms of the, um, I would also echo um, Councilor Flynn's comments about the prioritization, or excuse me, about the expansion, if at all possible, to um, after school hours or to BCYF, the concept of this in general, the My Cafe, and the dedication to having fresh, healthy meals for all students, I think is, is wonderful, and I would love to see if that's possible. Um, in terms of just, uh, I'm, I don't know if we're talking about the actual language of the, of the trust here. Sure. Um, <coughs> I, I have a question through the maker. Um, Unlike with ordinances which go to government ops and then they're kind of gone through and whatnot, this we're dealing with the establishment of a trust. So tell me, is this it's just a matter of an up and down vote on the floor on Wednesday or during meeting, or is there any going back and forth on this language? So my, my understanding would be that we would vote on it t tomorrow. Okay. So th would there be any su suggested well, edits? Maybe I mean, just because I know that in government ops there's. Yeah, so maybe we should <clears throat> let Justin do his presentation on the trust because that's his part of the hearing today. I'm going to have to leave shortly for okay. a meeting, but if I can just then put in some points that sure. I've, um, sure. suggestions, mm -hmm. uh, that I do support this, number one, that's mm -hmm. not a question. This is not uh, a criticism mm -hmm. of this. I've, uh, I've, I res respect the work that's been done. Um, I just wanted to ask, or in terms of the direct language in the trust, uh, one is in Article 5, Trustee Provisions, Section 513, hmm. you list the potential or the, the board members of the trustees. Yep. Um, suggestion only, um, would you be considering um, having a parent or having a student also on the board of the trustee? Um, so I, I think the, the point or the goal with the trustees on the trust fund was to really reflect the construction and operational needs of the program, not necessarily yeah. the policies and the programmatic decisions. I think that that rests squarely between BPS and the schools themselves and the school leaders. This is purely a, a um, almost a functionary tool right. to just collect funds from outside mm -hmm. resources and then really just redirect them back right back into the build, I'm sorry, the BPS capital plan that we can then sort of invest and get the rest of the schools up and running. Right. Uh, but along with the charitable mission, it is seems to be renovate, retrofit, and serve in, per, in perpetuity mm -hmm. fresh meals, period, right? So right. along with that goal of in perpetuity, mm -hmm. what fresh meals look like, what in terms of the whatever, mm -hmm. the feedback that you may want to consider sure. having from a student or a parent. Uh, That's the only reason why I'm mm -hmm. suggesting it. Um, the uh, other thing in line with the suggestion or the questions that um, Councilor Flynn had and myself was with regards, again, on, the, I guess it would be uh, Article 3, Section 3.3. 3. 
and specifically, it says to facilitate serving fresh, healthy meals cooked on site in various BPS uh, schools, mm -hmm. that's fine. But if there was an ever thought about an expansion, again, with the mission being about sure. equity and having children have access to fresh food, if it's only limited to on-site and BPS, then that might prevent either BCYF or the trust being able to fund other mm -hmm. outlets to children. Just thinking about that sure. in terms of long term. Um, and then I, I didn't hear, and maybe I just didn't see, the cost right now and what, what, the, what the trust is expected to raise on an annual basis in order to keep mm -hmm. this in perpetuity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can sort of talk quickly about the cost. Um, so the trust is being set up to accept uh, essentially donations and equipment donations mm -hmm. from um, outside entities, uh, most notably the Shaw Family Foundation, who has um, generously pledged to fund the majority of the program itself in terms of retrofitting the uh, spaces to get ready for the uh, My Way Cafe program. The majority of the budget for the program, actually the entire budget for the operations, still sits with BPS in their food and nutritional services line item in their portion of the budget. So that's where I think you'll have the kind of yearly um, discussion about how the program's running, you know, how the labor costs are running, how the food costs are running, and then how the expansion of it and how we're actually seeing any savings or if we are seeing savings. Um, that's the majority of it. The, the trust itself really focuses purely on upgrading the um, facilities to get ready for the program. Right, so how much money are you expecting to have that be put into the trust? Sure, so on a yearly basis, it's really gonna depend on the schools that are um, up and running. So this past year we did uh, 15 schools. There was a um, capital cost associated with that. We are uh, finalizing what that will be. There has um, at least been over a, a million in um, equipment donations that we're expecting. Uh, that are uh, sort of going to go into the schools and we sort of expect a, a substantial financial investment as well from some of those outside foundations, most notably the Shaw Foundation. Do you have a number? Uh, we don't have a final number on what's going to go in there, but we expect it to fully cost, uh, to fully fund the cost of the program. Okay, so you, you don't have a budget for yeah, this? Yeah, so we essentially went through the construction process, as, as John mentioned, um, in August. So we're still finalizing with our contractors what the final numbers are. We have some preliminary bids, but uh, I wouldn't want to mislead the council and, and sort of have those numbers out there too um, prematurely because we're still trying to finalize the punch list and sort of getting the final contracting costs. No, and, and so I, I'm only asking because it, it, it is a trust to set up to to raise, get money, funds, and yeah. so how much the trust would be expected to raise, get money, funds, and expend, I think would be good information. Maybe we can have it by the time we're voting on Wednesday? Sure, we can certainly try to dig it up, but it An really estimate? depends on who can, uh, who's donating the funding at the end of the day. So it's, it's um, until we get the check in the mail, it's one of those things we won't know exactly. But you, you would know how much it costs to retrofit, an estimate, all these kitchens. It, you, what you expect to, uh, you sure. mentioned that it's gonna be cheaper. And so where, where'd that number come from, that it would be cheaper to have the My Way Cafe? So, mm -hmm. right, right, to have the fresh meals made on site. Yeah, so just, just, just an estimate. Yeah, to clarify, like to, see for the to, trust. to clarify a couple of points, um, when I was talking about uh, the model being cheaper, I mean operationally, mm -hmm. it would be cheaper. That's not factoring in the construction costs related to actually converting the site to becoming a My Way Cafe site. That I'm, I'm strictly talking about the financials of, of when it's operating compared to how it's operating today without that. It's hard to speculate what the budget would be looking forward mm -hmm. because it, it's highly, highly dependent on what the individual school's needs are. This past summer we had, we had some sites that required nothing more than just taking out Old, an old oven, putting in a new oven, and, and converting a couple pieces of equipment, very little cost there aside from the cost of the equipment. We had other sites like the Adams that I showed you that would cost hundreds of thousands of dollars because of the level of construction that's required. Mm -hmm. And we don't really know what the costs of each site are going to be until we're deep in the weeds through public facilities process on actually estimating those costs and doing the full review of the design um, through that kind of arduous process. So it's, it's hard to mm -hmm. even speculate what a budget would be for the rest of the school district, what we would need to raise within the trust, so on and so forth. And I, I think if we did, it would probably be somewhat misleading and accurate. And so, I think I so just wanted to add something because, um, for example, the Gardner School, which wanted to be included in this program, pretty much has a fully functional kitchen. I don't know if they comply with everything needed to actually run 
a pro they're feeding their own kids right now mm -hmm. with that kitchen. Um, so some kid, to their point, I guess some it, it's not going to be consistent throughout the system. I don't expect. What, yeah, right. yeah. So I, I, I guess um, if we don't know where we're aiming towards, we know what we want to get done, but we don't know in terms of financially what we're aiming towards. Is, is it the city's position that we will, no matter what, have the funding for it because the Shaw Foundation is going to give us a blank check or? Uh, I wouldn't. Is it, is it your position that this will be fully funded? no matter the cost. I, I think that um, this is a defined priority of the mayor and that we will do everything within our power um, and within the constraints of our existing capital plan to fund the program. But is it, it is our expectation that the majority of the capital costs associated with this will come from philanthropy, whether it's the Shaw Foundation or someone else. I think it's something that we're gonna have to see exactly to John's point. If we decide to do 10 schools next year as opposed to uh, 80 schools, that's a different cost of what we're trying to raise. So I think that it'll be a little bit of a combination of the two. And I think as we get through next year's capital plan, that'll sort of dictate what exactly um, the city's portion is, if anything, um, versus what is philanthropic. So we don't know for sure that we'll have the funding for a number that we don't have yet. I, I would say there is, um, there is a, a, a sort of a message and a, a sort of priority placed on this by the mayor and he is um, intensely uh, interested in getting this program done over the next um, school year or two. And I think that if um, philanthropy does not come through, when, then we will have to sort of reorganize our priorities within Bill BPS or within uh, the capital plan to make sure that this gets done. All right. Good. Yep. Councillor McCarthy. Hey, Councillor. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, sorry I'm late. Um, I, I was listening. I know uh, Councillor Flynn had asked a lot of questions that I was um, uh, going to ask, so I'll review those and, and get those answers. Uh, I'm not going to repeat everything. The two state, really, statements that I first, um, when you start to expand, when you get into like my district, I'd love to be involved in uh, working with you to help choose a school, uh, work with the, with the staff there. Um, I've got great relationships with all the principals in District 5, and uh, it'd be nice to be involved in that process. So mm -hmm. I, you know, I hope you include me on that. Uh, I don't think you, you would leave me out. Uh, and then secondly, really just a thank you to the Shaw Foundation because it's not a really sexy thing to do to, to give uh, you know, inner city kids fresh food, and there's a lot of other uh, philanthropic um, that may get a lot more bang for the buck than this, mm -hmm. um, and stepping up to the plate like this is important. So um, I like the way the mayor's going on this, uh, trying to get more people involved from outside of uh, the bowling building to, to help our kids in Boston, and, uh, and you know, I'll be supportive as we move forward. Thank you. Just one last follow-up um, that was brought up about um, BCYF, which has numerous summer camps, um, some of them may serve as hubs. Um, you know, I think we should look at that for the summer programs because I think right now we're prepackaging food for, for campers. For example, the Jackson Man in my district runs a very extensive camp throughout the summer. It's, you know, a six week program. They provide food. If that's a hub for, the, for BPS, you know, we might want to look at just using it through the summers too, right? But again, I know you are worried more about BPS at this point, but it should be something that we look at sure. to expand throughout the year. The, the worry would be not so much uh, just focusing on BPS, but on the, um, on the state reimbursement uh, model. Um, okay. A vast part of the budget for food nutrition services comes from a state grant right. uh, that allows us to provide free breakfast and lunch to all of our students, mm -hmm. no matter what income level the family mm -hmm. has. Um, we would have to navigate those waters very, very close at hand with the state so as to be sure that if we did roll it out to non-BPS sites mm -hmm. during non-school hours, uh, for example, summer programming, that we could still be reimbursed for it. Otherwise, right. the funding model would look very, very different right. from how it does today. That's where we would have to be most careful. Right, and, and I'm glad you pointed that out, but I also know that that summer program is reimbursed maybe <clears throat> differently, but it, it's also mm -hmm. um, free and available to any uh, young person in the city of Boston, whether they actually go to a camp or not. Um, so I, I appreciate, you know, you keeping your eyes focused on BPS, but we should be, you know, making the most of these facilities if they're uh, going to be up and running in the near future. Um, 
think that concludes uh, what I have. Uh, just want to finally say a shout out to all our food service workers that are taking this on, this new um, paradigm in uh, feeding our children more nutritiously, hopefully more successfully, and with less waste. <laughs> so anybody else have anything to say? Anybody? Do I have any uh, testifying? So if uh, no one else would like to testify publicly, that concludes today's hearing. Thank you guys, uh, Thank you. Justin and John. Thank this you. hearing's adjourned. <laughs>